Hello, everyone, and welcome to our December uh, extravaganza, Christmas Around the World. So let me introduce myself. My name is Melissa Knowles, and I'm going to be your presenter today with Social Studies Services. We wanted to use Stratologica to show everyone just um, how versatile it is and to create a great resource for teachers and students alike. So let's get going. Okay. I'm so excited to be with you today. I'm a media specialist from Alabama and I've worked for several years um, in media. I've also taught several grade levels, including several elementary grades, kindergarten, third, and fourth. So I'm really excited to be here with you and share this resource because I have done so many Christmas Around the World units and to use Stratologica with it just makes complete sense. The students have a place in the world that you're talking about. It's not just in books and pictures. It's a real place that they can explore. So that is very exciting. Christmas is a great time to explore cultures around the world and 14 cultures are now included in this resource. But it may grow soon. I'm planning on adding a few more. I intended initially, according to the description, to focus more on literature, but this presentation I just had so much fun with that I added and added and added. So I hope it is a great resource to you and you can see ways that you can adapt it to your current unit or use it just as it is. So let's begin. Okay, when you open the Christmas Around the World presentation, this will be your first slide. Now, just in case you're wondering, at the end of the presentation, I am going to show you how to access the presentation and put it into your gallery. So, no worries there. We're going to go through it first. I hope you can see my screen now. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so the teacher's guide on this screen shows the information that's going to be presented for every country. Now, I've chosen to list everything out. Most of the information is on every country. In fact, every pin is the same for every country, so you'll see all those things. Now the links and websites that are embedded into the presentation will be different throughout just as I found things. So if you'll look then on the right you can see the editing menu. Now the top arrow is going to show you the switch to display. When you're working with your students you don't want all this editing information showing up on there. When you select that, all then you'll see is the tab for each country. You won't get, um, you won't get all the duration and transition and all of those things. So now the second arrow does show the editing information. And it offers some great things. You're able to copy slides. So if you're on Canada and you wanted to copy another slide so the students could actually go to maybe some of the places that we talk about, you could duplicate that slide and then delete the pins and use that for the students to add things. So that's an option. And that is going to be the two sheets of paper laid over each other that will copy that slide and put it underneath. You can also delete a slide you don't want. Um, you could even just delete everything on the slide to have the students add in their own information for that resource um, rather than have the pins that I've created. So lots of options. Now, if you look at the third arrow, you have display, title and description. On this slide, I wanted the title and description to be showcased and on the screen. Um, but on the rest of the slides, you will not see that title and description displayed. So the name of the country is already on the map, so I didn't need any other 
distracting information. Um, so I've unchecked those boxes for every other slide. Um, and then in the upper right hand corner of the white box, you can see that there are two arrows in a purple box. Now that will allow you to basically make that white box scroll to the side and go off the screen. And that allows you then to see full screen. So if the um, tool that allows you to move around the um, globe is in your way, you can just choose double click or click the double arrows in the purple box and that will hide that menu. So just some little information before we get started. So let's go ahead on our travels. Our first stop is going to be Canada. I've added the circles on each of the slides that I'm going to show you just to point out what's available. Each slide, as I said, has the same pins. So Canada, we're going to I'm going to show you the pin for the Christmas activities. Canada is a fun, cold climate. So as you can see, we have this picture of the great slide. I know my kids would love to write on that. So the activities tab, when you click it, it's going to be specific to the location. So you may not have everything that is on there. Um, several of the seasons go for so long through December into January. So there'll be some different things. So don't expect the exact same items on every page. It's specific to the country. Canada has a busy season. Shopping, um, you can see on the 24th of December, the stores close with about five or six, which is pretty early. That would put some people in a bind in America, I think. And presents on Christmas Day and then Boxing Day. Boxing Day is also celebrated in Britain, Australia, New Zealand, and other Commonwealth countries. Um, this is a big shopping day. The stores are hoped to empty so that they can fill it with new items. Now, the Christmas outdoor activities are also shown for what Canadians particularly enjoy during the season. So you may also find links or videos on some of the pages. So there's going to be um, one actually in Canada in the Festivals and Traditions, uh, sorry, yeah, Festivals and Traditions pin that's going to have a link to their parade, the oldest Christmas parade in the world. So it'll have some more information on if you want to know more about that. So some of them have links or videos even um, in the pin. Okay, so now we're going to fly off to Russia. As you can see, the pins are all on the country, and that will happen with every country, even the smaller ones. And once again, same titles, so you can, you just to have some cohesiveness throughout the presentation. Now, remember, you can still zoom into cities and go to sites around the world. So, visit places in Russia, zoom in. When you zoom back out, the pins are still there. No worries. So if you don't save, next time you open the presentation, it's right there for you. In Russia, we're going to look at festivals and traditions. Now in Russia, we find the tradition of babushka. She housed and fed three kings on their travels. So it was very, um, so the kings were very uh, impressed with her, and she then has become a very important person and character in children's literature and folk tales throughout Russia. Now, Dead Moroz is Grandfather Frost, and he, with his grandfather, brings presents to children during, uh, during the Christmas season. So it reminds me, um, too, of some other stories, because his grandfather is said to be made of snow, and she was made by a couple 
that could not have children. So, reminds me of Pinocchio and the gingerbread man. Now, of course, we've got the tradition of the stacking dolls. There are videos on YouTube of uh, Russians creating these dolls out of wood. It's very neat um, and crafting them. So, if you click the craft pin for Russia, your students could make their own paper nesting dolls. Now we're on to Europe. Germany. Germany has such a historic Christmas with the Nutcracker, several tra traditional songs written by Germans, candy canes and Christmas trees, and the Christmas music pin, when you select it, it's going to open and you get an embedded, embedded music video in the native language. Now, I really tried to find if it was in their native language or a language our students couldn't understand to find, with, find it with English subtitles when possible. So if you look at the image at the top, that's going to show you the, the normal in, image or pop-up that you're going to see when you select that pin. Under it, you, when you select play, the YouTube options open. Now, right next to the word YouTube, on the right, you can see the square. Now, that's going to open it into full screen so everyone can enjoy. And so this is where you would go um, during that time once you select the full screen. Now, I love this feature. Students do not see the sidebar in YouTube at all or comments underneath, or any other thing that you may have some worry about. Um, as you're showing videos using YouTube, even SchoolTube sometimes, you have to be very careful. So I love this feature. It opens directly in Stratologica and allows the students and allows you some peace of mind as you're showing the video. So back to traveling. We're going to next visit Australia. And this is a great place to show uh, people on the beach and people participating in summer type activities because it's summer in Australia during the holiday season. And while we're here, the featured book is Wombat Design Divine. Wombat loves Christmas and has been waiting to be old enough to be in the nativity play. The day has finally come, but as the parts are handed out, Wombat doesn't get the first part, or the second part, or the third part. So he begins to wonder, will he have a part in the nativity? So this is a great growth mindset book. The music pen is a funny Aussie version of Jingle Bells. So that is fun for students to enjoy. And they can understand it with a little bit of the Australian accent. So. They also have a wonderful feast. If you select the Christmas feast pin, um, this, these pins are going to include the traditional Christmas feast foods, and some have a link to a recipe um, if you wanted to create it with your students. Many Australians do have the traditional feast during the holiday season, and the idea of plum pudding or putting a token in a dessert is popular in several countries. So that may be a good um, discovery for your students to sort of do a scavenger hunt to find out which countries that are featured include some type of dessert like this. So just one other way to use it to get your students exploring and finding things in, embedded in the presentation. So. When you find whatever token is in the plum pudding, different places around the world have different beliefs that it could bring you good luck, money, or even marriage, depending on where you are. Some families during the holiday season don't eat traditionally, and they go outside and they barbecue. And there are some great pictures online of the feast that they enjoy. Sometimes Santa is even seen in the ocean surfing or lounging on the beach in Australia. 
So this is a fun place to bring in then the different seasons around the world during the holidays. So just to bring back to students that it's not winter everywhere. Our next travel is going to bring us to the Philippines. The Philippines has a bright musical holiday. Um, if you click the music pin, it is a little silly. Um, with it does have both the English and the Tagish languages, um, which is typical of the culture. So it was fun to watch, and the students enjoyed it. In activities, you'll find that their Christmas trees are beautiful. But interestingly enough, they're made of cardboard, twigs, or palm leaves um, for these trees. Now, some people do have artificial trees, but pretty neat, the native tree pictures online. In festivals and traditions in the Philippines, we learn that children play a version of our secret Santa. It's called Kris Kringle. And there's a link to instructions, so if you wanted to, you could play with your class. Now, the pin that we're going to select for this one is going to be the Filipino Christmas craft. And it is, oops, sorry, I'm going to have to go back. I went too far. Sorry about that. Oh, goodness. That's what I get for turning the view differently. Can't access. So let's try this again. Okay, the Christmas craft is really neat. In the Philippines, they cre create these beautiful lighted stars called paroles. I've added a video at the top to show you how to make it with easy materials that you would have around. So I really like this craft, but some of the things that he does may not work in my classroom. Um, such as um, you may want to use uh, hot glue or you could use paper clips and staples to secure each contact point. And rather than the tinsel to hang, you could use yarn or ribbon. Um, lots of different options, but to make it a little bit faster and easier, I would definitely use something where you're not doing most of the work and um, the students can really get involved in that. So now if it is fast and you need it to be quick, you could do the hot glue or you could split them up into groups and they could work together. Just have to be careful with that and one person ended up could end up doing all the work. Um, now the paroles. They, uh, oh, there's also a link at the bottom that allows you to go to the Giant Lantern Festival of San Fernando. Now here is where you'll see the giant pearls. They can be up to 18 feet and have to be moved around on trucks. Now the really neat thing about these, this particular festival, which I have added in, um, which this, when you click this link, I apologize, it goes to a video. And the video shows these beautiful light shows that the paroles have. Um, there's also things online about how, how much they cost. I mean, they are very expensive, which is neat. But the interesting thing about the light show is that no computers are involved. There is a man, or, or more than one man, but I pretty sure it was one that he spins a barrel and the barrel has contacts it may have been more than one but he spins the barrel with these electrical contacts as they hit the light show goes and the light show shows if he stops moving his barrel the light show is done and goes out so it was, it's just an amazing video on how these giant, beautiful light shows work without any type of computer. So I really thought that was interesting. Um, so I'm really excited to share that with you guys. And later in December, I'll be sharing it with my students. So finally, 
Our travels take us to one last area of the world, South America. Mexico. Yummy tamales and poinsettia craft are found here. So let's check out the literature of Mexico. So we're going to click the book suggestions link, or pin, sorry. So at the top you see that there's a video. Now both of these books are by Tommy DePaula. Um, so the video at the top is a read aloud of Poinsettia Legend and it is really neat. Every book suggestion pin is going to include a read aloud of at least one of the books. So I'm really excited um, to include that because you may not have every book, you may want to do some center type thing where the students can then observe um, the book on their own and go through it and maybe do some task at the end. Um, so the second pin then shows the title. When you click the title, um, as you can see, it is underlined and bold. When you click it, it's going to link you to possibly purchase the book or learn more about it. Um, so you can see the book, how much it would cost, um, and if you wanted to then access that book. That is available also on every book. Then you've got a great picture of the cover. There's times in your library you may not remember the title, but you may remember that picture, and so this cover is there. Um, then under that, you've got the author, and then a great description of the book. Since this is a long pin, as you can see the slider on the right-hand side, let's look a little bit closer. So here's our video. The point said a little legend read aloud. Then, if you use the slider on the right, you come to do, uh, La Posadas. And this is the first book um, about the La Posadas procession. So, Angie, Lupe, and Roberto are all sick or caught in a snowstorm and they could not attend the procession, even though they had very important parts in it. Well, a man and woman mysteriously show up and appear, and they take their role in the procession. Well, at the end, before they can be thanked, they disappear. So, it was a Christmas miracle. Sister Angie goes to the cathedral in the night and finds the wet footprints that lead up to the statue of Mary and Joseph. So, it's a great legend. Um, and you'll find in some of the other pins that they still do a procession where they bring figures to the church. So that's a pretty neat book and relative to even today. Then, The Legend of the Poinsettia. Now this is a really neat legend because poinsettias are so important even um, in America. This beautiful Christmas flower. So, the poinsettia from a little girl's unselfish gift to Christmas, this flower came to be sort of the flower of Christmas. It's what we think about at Christmas time. So the little girl's gift to the to the Christ child then made the flower become the legend it is today. So Tommy DePaula always has the just most amazing painting illustrations. And these two books will not disappoint. They have great illustrations and are wonderful reads. So the next slide I wanted to show you is the book list. So I'm hoping that I can get, if you want it, um, I'll show you some emails at the end and you could ask and request the book list if you would like it. There's some great authors here, 31 titles. Um, are included, and of course, there are several that you can interchange. But we've got some great authors Jan Britt, Astrid Lund Lundgren, Tommy DePaula, Raymond Briggs, Nim Fox. Some excellent authors that most children and um, teachers know. Now, there are some books like in Germany, we've got The Gingerbread Baby by Jan Britt and The Nutcracker by Susan Jeffers. There's several different gingerbread stories. There's several different nutcrackers. Feel free to bring in what you have if you would like to.
Now, another thing in the Philippines, I've suggested Jingle Bells by Isa Trapani. Now, this particular book does include several other countries like Mexico, Sweden, Poland, Italy, Kenya, um, but it does talk about the Philippines. So you could just focus on that section or read the whole thing to enjoy. Um, and then at the bottom, you'll see some additional resources that are not included in the presentation. So if I can get you this list and you're interested in these, um, there are some that are just about the world at Christmas time. So the Christmas Around the World series is great. It's actually in my school library. Um, walk Around, Walk This World at Christmas Time is an excellent book. And then A World of Cookies for Santa. So I love this one because it's going through the different types of cookies and the things that are left for Santa in different countries. So another way that the kids relate because they do, you know, they leave out their milk and cookies for Santa, but what do other children do? So I really like um, that option too. But don't hesitate to check your library. They may have some other ones. There were several of other um, Australian titles and, and some others, so uh, feel free to bring in your own ideas. Now, the countries that are involved in this uh, presentation, um, as I said, 14, <laughs> and I may be able to add some more, uh, but we've got Canada, Greenland, Swede Sweden, the Netherlands, Germany, France, Italy, Israel, Russia, England, India, Philippines, Mexico, and Australia right now. So feel free to add in any other countries or if you want to go through these and then have each student our student group work on and add some others. All great options um, and different ways to use the presentation. Now, it was created to be a teacher resource, but it could easily be also a student resource. Uh, so feel free when, when you download or when you add the presentation to your gallery, feel free to edit it however you would want. So if you want to edit a pin, all you have to do is right click on the pin and it opens the edit where you can change it. So you could add in your own videos, your own things. Um, it'd be neat if you had some grandparents or recent immigrants from other countries that you could utilize to share their Christmas stories or their favorite Christmas tradition. We have three foreign ex exchange students this year. So Germany, Spain, and Thailand. So I'm hoping to add Spain and Thailand. And they have been willing to record just a short clip of um, what ha some, uh, some things that are happening around Christmas in their country, their favorite Christmas tradition. And I wanted them to say Merry Christmas or whatever words they use in their native language. So that those videos will hopefully be added later and uh, utilized. So use people, they're happy to share. I asked a little girl that I know from Colombia and her mother shared a few things about their Christmas in Colombia. So you never know, everyone's got a great story and loves to share Christmas. Another option may be to go backwards and to, rather than give the students the country, give them some information, see if they can guess where, where they're at and what country they're at. So that may be another idea. Now, I love ideas. So the next slide is additional resources. I told you I just couldn't stop with this one. I just had such a fun time. So let's start with the Christmas Around the World Travel Journal. So. Of course, I always, I always love writing. Writing, there's not enough writing, so this is an easy way to bring in writing um, for the Christmas season. So students could put entries as you go through each pin and travel around. The students can add entries, so they could draw pictures. They could put in their thoughts, comparisons to what we do here, um, and maybe some things that they wonder. Uh, 
Maybe in Israel they wonder because the gifts are smaller and they don't have one big day, they wonder maybe how their feelings are or what they think or what it would be like. Um, so you could also do teacher directed prompts if the students were having some trouble with their writing. But I love this idea um, of allowing them more autonomy for their choices because everyone has the background of Christmas. Everyone knows Christmas and celebrates Christmas in different ways. And so I feel like their thoughts and their ideas would come a lot easier and get some great writing from it. Um, also, there are several ideas on the internet. This could be super, super elaborate if you wanted to. Although I think a simple journal is greatly effective to record their learning. Um, and of course, a sharing time for some of their favorite ideas or thoughts or comparisons would be a great idea. Now, I also thought of a Christmas quilt. We are just finishing um, our digital citizenship series and we made a digital citizenship quilt. And I said, oh, what a great idea to use that with Christmas around the world. So individuals or small all groups of students could research, use the pins or do their own research in a country. Um, and then you choose the requirements for the quilt square. It could be one full square that each person uses, or you could break it up, as I've suggested. You could cut it into, cut one square into four sections. So two squares will include writing and two drawing. So you're hitting um, the people that like each. In one square, they could put in some traditions. In the second square, activities. Then third, food. So we love Christmas food. And fourth, they could add a fun fact or maybe do a similarity comparison, um, maybe even a family scene of what it may would look like there. Then when you attach the squares, to, the squares together, it creates a lovely quilt display. I think it may be fun to then take a photo of each page and turn it into a quick, easy book for the students to share. Maybe they could even go to some younger classes and share some of their pages or even some other classes that may not be doing Christmas around the world would be a great idea. So also we had our leadership day and we had during our leadership day a wonderful wax museum. So Christmas museum or learning walk I think would be a great idea. Students could create a Christmas wax museum. So they dress up as a child from around the world during Christmas and maybe even have an area that they can decorate or simply a sign or something explaining the traditions. You could even do a narrator or a guided tour. So just some ideas to use that would be fun for the students to share their learning and become the experts and have ownership of what they're doing. Another idea that I enjoy doing sometimes is the shadow box style. So I thought they could create a family scene that depicts some of the differences or something of what a Christmas family get together would look like in a country and then have other classes walk through. They can explain their country. Um, and I see I have an in I need to fix, so I will do that. But, um, and, share also not only their beautiful visual I think shadow boxes are just gorgeous and the kids they really can do a lot with uh, recycled materials or things that they find around so I thought that would be a fun thing to do another elaborate idea um, at another school I was at our city did a giant um, festival where the students could go and they had a passport page and they every booth they went to they got stamped they could try things learn things eat music play games just tons of things it was fabulous so why not do that at your school each class could choose one country so you don't have you know a whole lot going on and then they get to be the expert and share with the other classes as they're around learning so that is also a fun, elaborate idea that people may want to try. Okay, and of course, 
course, as I said, I love hearing people say Merry Christmas in their native language. So when you select this pin, it opens a video. And this particular one is really neat that I like because um, I request this went out for people to record a video of them saying their greetings in different languages. And so many came back. So these are real people around the world contributing to a, a whole uh, video. So I just think that concept is neat and how small our world is and how people work together um, would be just a neat way, not to mention just hearing people say Merry Christmas in different languages would be fun. And then research extensions. Um, as a librarian, we are always working on research skills and ways to learn more about different items. So I had to add this in. So I think these would be some interesting ways to have the students then brainstorm a symbol of Christmas or even other December holidays. So they, that could be for the symbols, it could be Christmas card, a star, mistletoe, Christmas tree, Christmas carols, and they can discover their origin and what they represent around the world. So like different things, um, you'll find out in one country, just the mere dipping of bread in soup um, should, tells of a time when food was scarce. So there are so many uh, meanings behind, behind these uh, symbols of Christmas. Now the second option, they could research the different faces of Santa. So Santa doesn't always look um, like ours. Saint Nicholas. So, Father Christmas, Santa Claus, Santa Claus. There are lots of names and faces of Santa. So that'd be a fun um, thing to research. Uh, another one, like the book about the Christmas cookies. Reindeer are not always Santa's mode of transportation. So, discover the other ways he travels around the world. I think would be a neat way to represent or end or extend the learning. And finally, writing a pen pal type exchange I think is just a great idea. They put themselves in someone else's shoes. So they can pretend to have a pen pal and write about similarities and differences. They could pretend to be the pen pal and write to another child, so about their country. And then there are tons of messaging and social media templates online. You could even do a back and forth conversation where the students are pretend messaging each other. There are also sites and ways to access real live pen pals if you wanted to do that and um, have the students connect with um, other children around the world. So lots of options. Okay, I want to thank you so much. I, that is the presentation. There are so many ways to use it with your class. Um, I do want to show you very quickly how to access the presentation if you haven't already saved it to your gallery. So when you log into Stratologica, as you can see, I'm logged in. You're going to select the community. When you select the community, you can see that at the time I uploaded this, there are a thousand and one options. So don't stop at Christmas around the world, the first Thanksgiving, and Journey of the Pilgrims. So many great ways to use Stratologica with pre-made presentations and um, custom views that you can just edit to fit your needs. You don't always have to start from scratch. So. Christmas around the world should be close to the top, but you could type it in in the search box and it would show up. So it should be close to the top because I have my sort by date right now. So when you select the title, Christmas around the world, it's going to open into the preview. And here is a great place to then preview through the slide. Does it fit what I need? And finally, in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to click Copy to my gallery. When you copy it to your gallery, it automatically saves into your gallery. So to access it, you'll go to Maps, 
you'll select your gallery and it should be the top uh, option if you have it filtered by that. Then in the bottom right hand corner after you select it it'll turn blue. I'm not sure if I have that. Yeah okay it'll turn black sorry. It'll turn black and in the bottom you'll click open and at that point it'll open right into the title page of the Christmas Around the World Teacher Guide page. So I would love to hear other ways of uh, ideas you have to use it or things you would like that you would want to add to yours that maybe I can add to this one. Um, I, if you have any questions please post in the chat area. On the right hand side I see that um, someone was late and this program is about a Christmas around the world presentation that's available in the gallery for free. Um, as long as you have Stratologica you can use it. Stratologica does offer, if you don't have Stratologica, it does offer a 30-day trial. So that would take you through December. You can see how you like it. One thing I didn't show you here are the features of Stratologica, which are great. You have the overlay map, and then as you zoom in, you're going to your street view map. Um, so, so many options. You have a search. You can search for um, if we had gone to um, India, we could have gone to the Taj Mahal and zoomed right into an aerial view of the Taj Mahal through Stratologica. So not only are the pins, the embedded features, um, and all of the learning that you can do on the outside of the globe, you can also go much deeper. So Stratologica is a great program. If anyone else has a question, I'll be happy to answer it. So type it in the chat box. But I also want to show you the email that I told you about. Now, I always love to learn more. If you want more webinars um, or previous webinars about Stratologica, or if you miss one, they post it right there. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, www.socialstudies.com slash learning will take you straight to the professional learning page. There are also, uh, there also is a self-guided course. It's available in the community, Stratologica 101. So take your time, you can get credit for it, and it will walk you through all the great features of Stratologica. And then if you would like that book list, um, feel free to email P. Gothart at socialstudies.com. She's a great resource if, for any of your needs. And I have greatly enjoyed presenting with you tonight. I apologize for the glitch in the, in the um, PowerPoint, but I appreciate you guys sticking with me. and. and I hope that you find that this resource is um, a good learning experience for your class and I hope that there are many ways that you can use it. Please make it fit you and what you need. So I hope everyone enjoyed it and have a great night. Goodbye everyone. <laughs>